Well, fellow resellers, uh, YouTube subscribers, and maybe new people who uh, really don't know me yet. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, the link's down below. It's Vogue underscore squared. Uh, then also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me. Uh, so I haven't actually introduced myself fully to the community. And I mean, I've done interviews uh, and a few other things, but I kind of wanted to give an overview and really talk about my life story, how I grew up, uh, where I went to college, what I did after college a little bit, and then where I am now. So last year was my first full year of reselling. Uh, I've been doing it since I was 17, kind of on the side. Everything was part-time uh, in high school. My best friend in high school actually was the one who got me into it. He's the one that started it. He paid for his trip to England with all his eBay profits. And uh, I mean, just picking his ear, going to thrift stores with him, uh, I became hooked. But so that's kind of how I got into reselling. Uh, but I want to like kind of talk about what led me up to that point, uh, what got me to this point. So I was actually born uh, in Germany in 1990. Uh, my dad was in the army, so my parents were over there. I have an older brother. He's a year and four months older than me. He, uh, him and my mom live in Ohio, and my dad uh, lives about 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, in a kind of a mid-sized town called Jackson, Michigan. Uh, so I came back from Germany when I was nine months old, uh, kind of a very hectic time. Uh, between my parents and what was happening. Uh, so my grandparents uh, love them to death. They're uh, very kind souls. Uh, they almost took, got custody of me and my brother, but uh, my mom ended up pulling through uh, and started parenting. Uh, and then my dad, uh, so my parents divorced when I was two uh, my dad was an alcoholic growing up, or not growing up. Uh, I think the last time he had a drink was about 24 years ago. So he's a, obviously a recovering alcoholic. Uh, I've never seen him drink in my life, or from what I can remember. Uh, so he really turned his life around after that. And then, so I grew up with my brother in a single household with my mom. Uh, we'd see my dad every two weeks, every weekend. Uh, and that went on from like two to 12 years old. Uh, so my mom, she wasn't educated. She never graduated. She dropped out of high school. Uh, and I mean, she did, she did the best that she could. Uh, I don't blame her for anything. Uh, I think seeing her drive, her determination of working two minimum wage jobs, uh, for the rest of her life, uh, kind of instilled that, that hard work in me, uh, and I think just seeing that struggle almost on a daily basis, uh, really, e even subconsciously built that work ethic, uh, and I think as a, as an, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you, you need that work ethic, you need to, be able to work long days, like 12, 13, 14 hour days, uh, for long periods of time, because you're building a business, you're building your own brand, you're trying to take something from the ground and building it into an empire. Uh, so you need good time management skills, hard work, and uh, just kind of being a natural born leader. So yeah, growing up, uh, my mom wasn't home much. Obviously, she was working two jobs. Uh, me and my brother, we were in a uh, two-bedroom apartment, so we shared a room. Uh, my mom had her own room, obviously. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, shenanigans, uh, I guess that would be the best word, the, the safest word. Uh, I mean, I would run the streets, uh, come home whenever I wanted, didn't really have anyone looking after me too much. Uh, so it was kind of me and my brother. 
Uh, we'd see her mom, obviously in the mornings before she left for work. Then she'd come home late at night. Uh, and obviously that's not a recipe for success. So I was on a fast track, uh, going nowhere. So, uh, she, she dated, uh, very sketchy guys, uh, drug addicts. Uh, so I saw, I mean, I saw a lot of stuff that no child should ever have to go through or see. Uh, but I mean, if I had to go back, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. I would I wouldn't change anything about my life because it's gotten me to this point. It's allowed me to view the world in different ways that other people may not. Uh, and I'm not I'm not telling this story for uh, sympathy or anything other than I just want you guys to know who I am, where I come from, where my drive comes from. Uh, and what I do on a daily basis, what, what drives me. Uh, so with that being said, yeah, obviously, uh, I saw a lot of stuff growing up that no kid should ever have to see. Uh, but again, I wouldn't change it. So, uh, around 12 years old, I think, yeah, I think I was in the sixth grade. I ended up getting in a lot of trouble, uh, obviously throughout my school years, actually, uh, especially grade school up until about middle school, uh, even a little bit in middle school. Uh, I was in trouble a lot, suspended a lot. Uh, teachers all had the same thing to say, every pe teacher conference. Uh, he's great, smart, uh, outspoken, but he just doesn't know when to stop. And I mean, I guess I could uh, say that that's still true about me now, but uh, I'm putting the the drive to never stop into something a little more productive, like reselling on e-commerce websites. Uh, and so, yeah, it was, yeah, sixth grade, I ended up getting a lot of trouble uh, where they actually expelled me. Uh, so after that happened, my dad and the, the woman he was currently dating who would later or soon after become my stepmom uh, they ended up getting custody of me and my brother. Uh, I, actually, let me backtrack a little bit. So, trying to go back to the entrepreneurial spirit again. Uh, I, always, I, I believe that you're kind of born with it. I mean, I guess you could learn it later on in life. But I think, in the, 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 I mean, there's studies going on that there's an actual like entrepreneur gene. Uh, but yeah, growing up uh, in, the, in the cafeteria, the, they would sell like 75 cent candy bars or a dollar candy bars. And I noticed that at, at the stores you could get like a pack of six, probably around that time, it was probably only like two bucks for a pack of large Snickers bars. So what was that just under 40 cents a bar? Uh, it may have been actually 25 cents at the time. I don't know. But essentially what I did was I undercut the cafeteria. So I bought a ton of these candy bars and would sell them to my friends and people at my school and they, they knew to come around to my locker and uh, pick them up because they were a quarter cheaper than the cafeteria and uh, I was kind of available whenever not just at lunchtime uh, and then that also spread over to the whole Pokemon card craze uh, I was kind of the guy you needed to go through if you wanted to make any trades uh, I, w I was the main guy until they ended up banning them from our uh, ban them from, banning them from our school, uh, and I still did it a little bit. Yeah, I was that type of kid that would push the, push the envelope and see how far I could get, and then obviously they got taken away. But, uh, fast forward, yeah, so I got kicked out of school when I was 12, uh, expelled for a year from, uh, I lived in Fowlerville, Michigan, which was, is, I think about... 30 to 40 minutes away from where I live now. I'm in Ann Arbor. And uh, so I couldn't go to any Fowlerville public schools in the area. So my stepmom told my dad, like, hey, you need to get custody of your kids. They're, she, she recognized even that we were on a fast track going nowhere. Uh, and I'm for, forever grateful for that moment in my life because uh, it, it changed my life instantly. Uh, I suddenly came into 
a more stable parent household, uh, we were a little more well to do. I started going to a Catholic school, so I went to a Catholic school from sixth grade on to when I graduated high school. Uh, obviously, you're if you're going to a private school, you're more than likely surrounded by a little more wealthy people, uh, and so yeah, we we moved to Jack. I moved to Jackson with my brother, and. We, we lived in the nicer part of town where all the subdivisions were. I started going to a Catholic school. And, I mean, my life was did a complete 180. So I was, on, I was in a household that really valued education. And again, like, I, I don't blame my mom for anything that happened while I was growing up. Uh, I, it made me a stronger person. I, I, again, I wouldn't change anything. Because I don't know if I would be where I'm at today without going through that and I also recognize like obviously there's millions of people who have had it way worse than me and then there's millions of people that had it way better than me Uh, I'm just telling you my story uh because I thought that you guys might want to know uh I know a lot of people reached out to me on Instagram when I did bring it up I think it was just a couple weeks ago so it's I'm a little overdue but better late than never but yeah so started going to a Catholic high school uh, Catholic school and moved into a house. Finally got my own room for the first time. Uh, I had a stepbrother at the time, uh, and then my little sister. She's my half sister. Uh, was born thirteen years. Yeah, she's thirteen years old. So uh, I was thirteen when she was born. Uh, so they took they took my room that was upstairs. They built a room downstairs and. Now my room is in the basement, which was fine. I mean, it was it was quiet. Just got a little cold sometimes. Uh, so yeah, and so seventh and eighth grade were those weird times for me. Uh, my parents were, or my dad and stepmom were very strict. And I mean, looking back now, there's probably a few things that were a little fucked up. Uh, but I I needed. A very regimented schedule I mean, at least for the first year or two of adjusting like ad- essentially I, I, I mean I, I got a new life uh, it was a totally new life I was u- used to running the streets at any time of the night hanging out with my friends whatever getting in trouble like smoking cigarettes when I was fifth grade I mean just stupid very stupid stuff uh, so I really needed that that over the top discipline uh, and, and I got it. I mean, I would say 7th and 8th grade. Between those two years, I was grounded probably a year and a half of that. Uh, and so, yeah. So 7th and 8th grade, I played football. Uh, I ran track one of those years. And then my, my stepmom was a distance runner. So I asked her one day, we were in Kentucky. Asked her one day if we could, if I could go for a run with her. Uh, she was doing a five-mile run. So I did it. She whooped my ass. I was like huffing and puffing about 30 meters back the entire run. But we finished. I looked at her and I was like, that was fun. Can we do it again tomorrow? Uh, And I mean, most kids wouldn't. I mean, go run five miles and be like, never again. Run a mile and they would say never again. Uh, But no, I got hooked. But we, I went to a school that really valued football. We were were great. Uh, Multiple time state champions in our division. Uh, so I played seventh and eighth grade, and then me and my buddy, who was the one that ended up getting me into eBay, he calls me up once day in the summer. Uh, they had summer practices. This was going into our freshman year of high school. Had summer practices, and they're like, he calls me up and he goes, "Dude, let's just show up one time, see how we like it, and uh, go from there." So we we got stuck with the JV running group, uh, junior varsity running group. Uh, for our very first run, it was a four mile run, and me and him just took off. We destroyed everyone, uh, and we were like, "Damn, we, I think we found our niche. Like, I think we can do this." Uh, we we played uh, essentially ultimate frisbee kind of game uh, during it, and we were hooked. We were like, "Damn, this is fun. This is a uh, the the group that ran. They weren't really our crowd at the time, but." Uh, I mean, by the time we were seniors, they were our best friends. Uh, we were we were officially the weird people, the weird runners, the weird distance runners, uh, and that was fine. We embraced it. So yeah, all uh, all through high school again, uh, 
my parents pretty strict uh and I don't I mean again I don't blame them like I didn't I didn't really drink ever uh in high school didn't go to any like the big parties uh I worked that that, that was the other thing so like yeah I did s- start growing up in a better well-to-do household but they also didn't just give me anything uh their their gift to me was providing clothes on my back a roof over my head food uh and then obviously buying my uh buying my uniforms for school but every anything else extra i had to work for it and i fully appreciate that so when i uh, i turned 14 they're like you need to get a job part time so i started working for the grocery store that was down the road i would write, or actually i started working at the grocery store that was down the road from my high school so it was probably 5 miles from my house uh and yeah, I'm 14. I can't drive. Uh, my parents are busy. They're not going to drive me. So I started riding my bike everywhere. So yeah, I was that kid that was riding his bike all the way across town just to get to work every morning or every evening, ride at home, uh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and from there, every paycheck, they forced me to, they took half of it from me and put it in a, a college savings account. Again, brilliant idea. At the time, I fucking hated it. I was like, no, this is bullshit. I, I earned this money. This is my money. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, you're 14 years old. You think you know everything in the world. And I mean, I'm 26 and I still think I know a lot, but I got a lot to learn. Uh, but I do, I can look back now at 26 years old and appreciate where I came from, what my parents did for me, uh, my stepmom did for me, uh, and yeah, I mean, growing up, like, she was my stepmom. Did I did I love her? Uh, I mean, probably not at times. I mean, actually, I would say a lot of the time I didn't because I was always pissed off or upset. Like, she was out to get me. But in hindsight, it was, I needed it. She knew I needed it. And it made me a better person in, in the end. So, again, no complaints. So, yeah, all through high school. So, ninth grade. Uh... Running, running was going well, very well. Um, we, I think we made states. Yeah, we made states uh, in cross country. I think we were fifth or sixth, maybe. Uh, I was all region as a freshman, and then I made all state, or I made states in track and field in the mile. Or no, I didn't make it in the mile. Uh, I made it in the four by four hundred relay, and then the four by eight hundred relay. And I was hooked, so I was ready. I was coming out sophomore year, ready to take on the world. Uh, Ended up winning our county meet. Uh, I would later go on to win it three times in a row. Only me and one other person from the county have ever done that. And ended up being all-state and cross-country, all-state and track. Uh, And so, I I mean, I set big goals for me. Like, uh, in the summer, I wanted to be running 1,000 miles that summer. Uh, over three months uh looking back now it doesn't seem like a lot when you're in college but it was a lot then uh and that was riding my bike every single day to practice i I ended up not getting my license until i was 18 again uh kind of the whole strict parents thing uh and they also wanted me to get all my driving hours in before they would sign off on anything and i also had to learn on stick shift again These are all very good life lessons to have uh, if you're ever stuck somewhere and you can only drive a stick. I know how to drive a stick now. Uh, I've never been in a car accident. That was my fault, so knock on wood. So, uh, yeah, I would bike to practice every single day, start running, bike back. It was just another day for me, go to work. Uh, And then, so, yeah, junior, senior year, junior year, I was one of the top guys in uh michigan uh i was runner up multiple times to what ended up used to, uh, was going to be a future national champion uh his name's maverick darling he ended up going to wisconsin uh we were decent friends uh and then senior year again i was runner up a few times caught some interest from some big schools uh i was highly recruited uh and so i kind of had my pick of schools at that time on where I wanted to go. Uh, what it, the two, two or three schools that it came down to was Michigan State, Eastern Michigan, or Grand Valley. Uh, my parents were 
pretty gung ho about me staying in state to keep tuition costs down. Looking back again, very good idea. Uh, Michigan State came in with the the biggest offer, uh, athletic scholarship offer. So obviously, being in the Big Ten, you're gonna get. We have some of the best distance runners uh, up and down the board across the country. Uh, so it was it was gonna be tough. Like, and that's what I wanted uh, my whole life. Uh, I kind of go through life and a lot of people have noticed this about me. Like I go through life with a kind of a chip on my shoulder. I have something to prove. And I probably, that probably goes back to me growing up, uh, where I came from, because I do feel like I always have something to prove and like, it might, it might get annoying to people, but at the end of the day, it's what drives me. Like I want to be the best person that I can be. I want to work harder than anybody. I'm fiercely competitive. I want to be the best at anything at all times. And yeah, I was the worst kid to play games with. If I would lose, I would throw the worst tantrums ever. Uh, my grandma and brother hated playing games with me because I would just get so pissed if I lost. Uh, but yeah, I ended up going to Michigan State on a partial athletic scholarship, and that's really when I started kind of ramping up eBay a little bit, doing it more part, I mean, obviously still doing it part-time, but whatever free time I had outside of studying, I'd be hitting thrift stores to get, uh, to source products and send them to auction. So when I, when I was doing eBay all the way up until I went full time, I was only doing auctions. I didn't have an eBay store. Uh, and I would only do auctions on Thursdays and Sundays. So those, because those were proven, I read like an eBay article that said like Thursday nights and Sunday nights are the best. Obviously Thursday nights because people are getting paid on Friday. So they're ready to spend their money. And then Sunday nights, I think it's just more of like your home. Uh, you don't have much to do. So you're probably going to start browsing the internet looking for cool stuff like this Tommy Hilfiger jacket. Uh, but yeah, so we didn't, couldn't really, like we were in season all year round throughout the summer or whatever, I'd have some part-time jobs, but eBay still held my attention, like, in the palm of its hand. It was, it was this, this great thing that you can make money out of, and with just a little bit of work. I mean, I guess, yeah, I would say a little bit of work, uh, comparatively uh, speaking. And so, yeah, I went through, all the way through college, I ended up, getting hurt quite a few times so my freshman year I was one of the fastest guys in the fastest freshman in the country in the mile I ended up making nationals out in Oregon uh, I was the first guy out of the finals uh, at the national championships then I got hurt a uh, st uh, stress fracture in my femur so that set me back quite a bit and then it was kind of trying to get back to that point and I became very impatient again goes back to that competitive spirit and so I would always be pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope, not really listening to my coach. And I got hurt three more times after that. Uh, so kind of abysmal seasons from sophomore, junior year. And then my senior year, finally, it was just like, dude, you need to relax on your training. You need to listen to exactly what coach is saying. And you'll get to your goals so I ended up running four flat that year indoors and then I ran four flat again a couple times or yeah a couple times indoors that year and then again outdoors I believe yeah after I graduated I ran another one I ran three more after that so yeah that's that's my fun fact I've ran five four flat miles so four zero zero point zero something or one something whatever uh, I never broke it so after I graduated uh, college, I moved to Ann Arbor to join a running group and I started working for a tech startup and that really piqued my interest in, in business. Uh, I worked there for just under two years. Great people, great CEO, lifelong friends. Uh, it was just, it was a fun time. Like, uh, at a startup, you kind of, you learn all aspects of the business. You, you can essentially be your own CEO, even though we did have a CEO, uh, he was, he was a bit hands off and he allowed you to 
do your thing because he, I mean, he wanted you guys to, he wanted us to learn. He, like, if you work for a startup, you have this internal drive for the most part on wanting to learn stuff, wanting to get stuff done, wanting to further the business. We, we essentially became a family. Uh, and so I took that role. I mean, I took that role very seriously. And then I started looking at MBA schools. I wanted to go to school for business. Uh, so I graduated college with my undergrad with an art education and social studies degree. Uh, at Michigan State, you have to do a year-long internship. And instead of doing my internship, I wanted to continue running because I wanted to see where that would take me. Uh, I went through a pretty tough break uh, uh, breakup during that time. So I kind of lost my focus on running, which looking back now, it's great because there's there's zero money in running if you're not, even if you're top 10 in the world, uh, if you're outside that top three, top four, you're not making shit. You're like literally not making anything. Uh, and so started looking at MBA schools and I ended up getting back into Michigan State to do my MBA in supply chain. And so I went back. And that was a that was a fun ride. So I was there. I I only went for one semester. I ended up dropping out because I was a little bit frustrated with the lack of uh, entrepreneur classes. Uh, and I, I I fully get where they come from. Uh, it's a great program, great people. I've met lifelong friends through that too, uh, and contacts that will help me later on in life if I call upon them. And same thing if they call upon me if they want to know. My opinion on something e-commerce related, uh, I'm more than happy to give it. But yeah, I was frustrated with how they were teaching you to work for a large company. And again, like that's what you're getting your MBA for. You're you're getting it to work for someone else. And I could not. I literally woke up every single day thinking to myself, how am I gonna go through life working for someone else? I and it was this fire inside of me that was like consuming me. And so about a month left of school or the first semester, I was starting to debate on dropping out. Uh, I brought it up to my advisor. She kind of talked me off the ledge, told me to finish out first semester, see, see where we're at. Uh, so finished out first semester and then yeah, so we, we get a month long break between uh, winter and then the start of spring semester. And so I told myself, hey, you're going to hit eBay as hard as possible or e commerce sites as hard as possible during this month to see if this is a viable option to go full time. Because, yeah, it scared, it scared the hell out of me. If But as an entrepreneur, you need to jump out of your comfort zone. Like, if you want to be truly successful, you need to do things that push you, push you, push you way out of your comfort zone, get you into this area where your friends, your family, everyone around you is telling me, telling you that you can't do it. And that was my drive. Uh, but I also had a very good support system. I didn't have people telling me that I couldn't do it. I mean, there was, there was something, people being incredulous, uh, and uh, I mean, that's reasonable. Like obviously any venture you go into that's, that's new to people or people that don't know, they're, they're going to be a little incredulous, but never had anyone that told me that, no, dude, don't do that. Like that's stupid. And so, yeah, again, if you're an entrepreneur, you need to step out of your comfort zone. You need to get so uncomfortable and fearful that you will not be able to afford rent for that month because it's those things like that that push you to the brink to continue grinding work work working and that's what this e-commerce business is all about it's how much can you grind how much can you get done on a daily basis and but you also need to look at the facts of if you want to grow, you're going to have to give off a little bit of your business, hand off the menial tasks to people who are smarter than you, that work just as hard as you. Uh, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. That's that's how you grow as a, as a leader. Uh, and so, yeah, after f that month, 
uh, in December, obviously the numbers are going to be inflated because it's fourth quarter anyway. I ended up doing just under 30,000 in, in gross sales. And I was floored. I was just like, dude, this, this is viable. So second semester starts, I go to class the first day. We all go out with friends to celebrate the first day of class. I wake up pretty hungover. And I look at my alarm clock and I'm just like, nope, I can't do this. I literally cannot stand the thought of showing up to class one more day. So I disenrolled from all my classes, sent out an email to my advisor and told her I was done. I'm moving on. Uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate the help. Uh, but this isn't for me. So that day, no, two days later, I opened up my own LLC had my logos out ready, uh, opened up my first eBay store and have never looked back. So last year I ended up doing $250,000 in gross sales. So that's not profit, obviously 250,000 in overall sales, everything across all the e-commerce platforms that I was a part of Amazon, eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, uh, Etsy, uh, Depop, uh, Grailed. I think, yeah, I think I'm part of about seven different websites. Uh, and again, if you're, if you're not a full-time reseller, I don't recommend being spread out that much, but I'm full-time. So I, I mean, I have 13 to 14 hours a day to, uh, to spread myself thin a little bit and I cross post a lot. Uh, so if something sells on one platform, you, you have to be at the ready to take it off any of the other platforms that you might have it on. Uh, but yeah, that was my life growing up uh, into where I am now. And I, I really wanted to tell this story to let you guys know who I am, uh, maybe provide some inspiration to someone that's watching this. Uh, because if I can provide inspiration to one person watching this, then I, I'm very happy to share my story. And if I can get someone to get out of their comfort zone and start running their own business or doing their own thing, then again, that's a win. I want to see everyone succeed in this realm of e-commerce sales. And there's room for tons of people. Uh, but you need to, like, this isn't, this is not easy, not easy by any means. You're going to have days, like these past few days, eBay sales have been just plummeted but if you have your finances set up correctly there's not anything you have to worry about if you have a retirement account so i have a roth ira uh i have a normal investment account i have savings accounts uh, i have my business account uh if you have everything set in place and you're surrounded by a good network of people that are either supporting you or helping you directly then it's going to be hard to fail because you did everything right to get to this point. You did A, B, and C. You didn't go from A to C and skip to B. Like there's no, there's no skipping steps. Uh, that's not how success works. There's no, this is not a get quick rich or get rich quick scheme. Uh, this is small things to do in your life to make you successful. Uh, I recommend getting books, uh, motivational books. Uh, I'm not a huge person on like motivational quotes, whatever. Uh, but I, I believe I read lots of books about uh, very uh, successful coaches, love reading books about coaches, uh, and then just like entrepreneur books. You expand your knowledge. Like this is, as a leader, or if you want to be a leader, later on in life, uh, you need to recognize and sympathize with people that are lesser than you. Uh, I mean, there's only lesser than you or less fortunate than you. Uh, and I think coming from that background, uh, for the first 12 years of my life, it helped me to better sympathize with people who are less fortunate than me. Uh, recognize that some people don't have it as easy as you might so they're not lazy uh 
they're just a victim of their circumstances. But I also believe that you shouldn't take on the victim. You shouldn't take on the victim like woe is me. Pull yourself up. Uh, it will get better. Work hard. Put your head down, and don't worry about all that other stuff that's going. Like life's not fair. I learned that very quickly. Life is not fair. There's people who don't ever have to work again in their life. There's people who are going to be like my mom, that are going to be working two minimum wage jobs the rest of her life. Uh, probably never retire. And uh, I mean, that hits home. I mean, it, it's my mom. But again, sometimes you become victim of your circumstances and sometimes you are able to get yourself out of those circumstances either by happenstance. So if I didn't get, get kicked out of sixth grade, I may not be talking to you guys right now on this. Actually, I can almost guarantee that I wouldn't be. Uh, I'd probably be in prison or dead. Uh, so I got very lucky and I can recognize that I got lucky and I'm forever grateful for, for the people, my family, my friends in my life that have helped me become the man I am today. Uh, but yeah, again, in this job, working hard, putting your head down, not complaining, not, not taking that victim stance will go a very long way. And that's the crazy thing about e-commerce. Uh, no one knows what color you are. No one knows what gender you are. Uh, I mean, obviously, if your eBay store name sounds male or female, uh, that you can make an educated guess. But no one, I mean, no one cares about your education, how you grew up. Uh, because all, not, none of that matters. If they're, if they're buying a jacket, uh, they, don't, they don't give a shit. If you're male, female, black, white, Asian, it, like they don't care. They they just want your products. So, I think this type of line of business, you you can succeed uh, through a lot of hard work, uh, making business connections. So that was my that was my other thing. Like now that I've started pushing social media, I push myself out of my comfort zone. It may not look like it on camera, but I. Uh, I was a, I'm a pretty shy guy, uh, a little bit introverted, and I told myself in 2013 that I wanted to expand immensely through social media, and this got me out of my comfort zone, and I've grown so much from January to where I am now. Well, I actually started YouTube at the end of February, so even what, like three, less than a month. I can tell already that I'm more comfortable out in the real world talking to people, making these business connections, going to thrift stores, talking to the workers, being nice to the workers, uh, because you never know, uh, get to know, I mean, get to know your local thrift store workers. They, they probably have a great story to, to tell, uh, and you never know what they're going to be able to provide you in the future, but don't make those connections with the thought in mind of what can they only do for me. Provide something back to them. And that could be just a listening ear. Uh, and yet, it's it's weird hearing this stuff come out of my mouth because even like five years ago, four years ago, I never thought this way. Uh, but I realized very quickly that in the business world, it's all about human connection. Even though we're in this e-commerce realm, you still need to make connections. If you if you want wholesale accounts, you need to reach out to the right manufacturers. Uh, let them know who you are, what you do, what you can provide them by buying their product, and then what you can get in return. It's little things like that. Uh, human connections go a long way. So, again, uh, this this business isn't for everyone. It's really not. It's, it's for the, the self-driven, the self-motivated, the person who can manage their time well, the person who can hand over parts of their business to people that are smarter than, than them and be kind of hands-off and not worry about it because you know in your heart or your gut that you put the right people in place to help you succeed. Uh, and if you have people in your life around you that are that are doubting you, uh, 
that are putting you down that that aren't helping you move forward cut them out like honestly that's that's might be the best thing you could ever do in your life is cut out the people who are holding you back and again i wasn't i was being told things like this growing up and i never gave any thought about it i was like come on this is this is my best friend like or this is my good friend why would i ever cut them out of my life once that happens your life starts on the upswing who you surround yourself with tells you a lot about yourself like i i surrounded myself growing up with hood rat kids i was part of the hood rats and it, it, I was again I was on a fast track going nowhere and that all changed because I decided that I was above school policy and got myself expelled again I'm more than happy that I did though because it changed my life uh so yeah I went I came from a single parent household uneducated to now a person who's looking hopefully this year to be doing 350 to 400 thousand dollars in sales gross sales by the end of the year and then continue to grow from there i i now have two employees or two assistants that help me photograph and measure stuff that i would say i mean one of them at least is uh the other one just started uh the other one's been working for me for about three months now. She's great. She's self-driven, doesn't complain. Uh, she works again. She she's a she's a nanny, uh, so she comes over when she can. When she, and I I mean I fully appreciate it. I don't I don't give her any set hours, but she works hard and she doesn't complain. And that's what I want out of my workers: someone who puts their head down and no matter what task you give them. I'm not, and I'm not asking these, my assistants to go fetch me coffee or drive me places or like, I'm not like, don't do that. Go get your own coffee, make your own coffee, make your own food. Don't be that fucking asshole of a boss. Uh, and I don't like, they, they refer to me as their boss. I'm like, come on guys, don't, don't tell me that. I'm not like, this is a mutually beneficial agreement that we have. You're giving me your service and your time, and I'm compensating it with money. Uh, so it's it's mutually beneficial to both of us, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys even more because you don't complain about a task of photographing and measuring a ton of items. Uh, and I think that kind of leads to my leadership as a boss uh, and the compensation I give them. I give them fair, fair compensation. Uh, so, and it, uh, this, I mean, just saying it out loud, it's crazy to me that where I came from to where I am now, it's just weird because, yeah, I mean, I didn't give any thought to ever owning my own business, uh, ever graduating college. Uh, I didn't even know really what college was <laughs> growing up for the first 12 years of my life. It was never on the radar. It was never really spoken about in my household. Uh, but yeah, again, I'm not, I'm not telling you this story to get any sympathy or anyone to feel bad. I'm just telling you what you guys can do at any point in your life to become successful in the e-commerce world and this doesn't happen overnight this is not a get rich quick scheme because there's very few things in life that you can just get rich like that lottery is one of them i don't gamble i don't see the point of it uh i think it's a huge waste of money i gambled once ever in my life uh and i'm glad i lost the very first time i lost 92 bucks at the casino and I legitimately got sick to my stomach after that and vowed to myself, I will never, ever, ever, ever gamble again because it's such a waste of money. It's like I could have taken that 92 bucks, bought 30 shirts from Goodwill, and then flipped them for three 
to six hundred dollars, and that gives me a bigger thrill than gambling my money away. Uh, so it's, I mean, again, it's it's different for everyone. Uh, this this not working for someone else is how many people like myself love. I wake up every morning loving my job. There's no Monday morning blues in my life. Uh, the worst part of my job is shipping out a bunch of stuff. But then I look at my bank account and I'm like, all right, I can, I can pull my big boy pants on and ship out these 100 packages on every weekend. And yeah, it's it's a fun ride, and I and I recognize people that work for other people. Uh, there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Some people need that that steady income, that no worry, stress. I mean, relatively stress free life of working for someone else. But that's not how you become wealthy. I mean, you can become wealthy, what whatever is in your head is wealthy, but where the true wealth comes from is owning your own business building business relationships and really taking hold of your future. So to recap, I went from a single parent household to a little bit better middle class, but that middle class, my parents still built that foundation of working hard not asking for handouts, putting your head down and just busting your ass every single day and not complaining. So I appreciate that. And then the relationships I built in running. Like running is a tough sport. That taught me how to be tough, tough minded, especially. Running is 80 percent mental and twenty percent physical. Like you can run for days, but when you start telling yourself that you can't is when your body starts breaking down. And that's that's true in any aspect of life. When you like the mind's a very powerful thing. So if you wake up every morning dreading going to work, uh just down on life all the time, that's gonna seep into other areas of your life. So if you don't like what you're doing, do something to change it. And that's what I did. Like I woke up for three months straight, hating, I mean, kind of, kind of hating my life. And I was looking at what I did the most, where I gravitated to. And that always went back to eBay. Any free time I had, I would push off studying to list items on eBay. And so then I realized like, hey, you need to do what you love. You're going to be a lot happier doing what you love rather than being miserable for the next two years. And so that's exactly what I did. But I appreciate you guys listening to my rant. Hopefully I provide a little inspiration for you guys. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hey, give it the thumbs down. Uh, provide some criticism though on why you gave it the thumbs down. I'm perfectly fine. I love constructive criticism. Uh, but yeah, if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's Vogue underscore squared. Uh, I have a lot of great Instagram stories from what I've been told. And I provide some decent content. And I'll, I'll hit you guys with the follow back for the most part. Uh, they've been streaming in quite a bit lately now that I've been expanding quite a bit. So if I don't, I apologize. But thank you for watching and happy reselling. Have a good day, everyone.